my name is Russell Scott. Um, I've been carving for, Lynn and I have been carving for 15 years. As a matter of fact, um, last month was my 15th anniversary of coming through the door for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, being a member here. Uh, this is Lynn's 15th anniversary here. Okay. So I start all over. Oh. Anyways, um, I started uh, carving uh, here uh, because I started carving um, uh, 1999. I took a class with Dick Joyce, who was a uh, member here. A lot of people remember Dick Joyce. And uh, I just brought in a couple of actually one piece that I've that I've uh, done and just thought, what the heck, I'll just. Uh, first Santa Claus that I ever made. And if you look a little closer, his hands are a little thin. I had no idea at the time that those were hands, and I thought, what the heck is he doing? It looks like he's pulling taffy or something. <laughs> well, there you go. I learned something right there. Um, right away, I took, I took a uh, video of a gentleman named uh, Ben Glass on carving an old world Santa. And that's what I want to start with. He had this concept of taking the block of wood and cutting it diagonally, like this, instead of flat, and you, you cut your pattern out. He'd cut diagonally like this, and this way you get more carving for, for your wood. More scope. And uh, so I carved this. This is one of the first ones that I, that I carved from his. Well, like I said, the, what I want to talk about today is creativity. And one of the things that uh, you can get creative is through somebody else's model and changing it slightly. And what happened through time is I kept changing the model slightly. And uh, here is uh, my model here. The simple, simple wood carving is kind of hard to, well, you might see some similarity. And then with this model, you can do all kinds of things. You can stick a hole in there, and you can be holding on to a stick, and, uh, or you can be walking. And uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting to keep uh, changing things around. I got to a point where, if you can see the, where the arm and the beard separates, I think, well, that's kind of a little difficult trying to get in there. So I got into taking the beard and just put the beard all the way to the arm. All I did is just put a little dent in there. Then I created one that had a, he was just simply holding a tree. So just a, a diagonal, a green diagonal, and he's holding the tree, and I thought, well, let's make the tree bigger than the Santa. And so I created the tree a little bigger from that. And uh, from there, I created so many different uh, models. This one here has a, is a, thin and tall. I've done some short and, and wide, and this one he's got a, um, a quilt in front of him. So it's kind of interesting about how you can do all kinds of things until I got to a point where um, I could make a cutout, the same cutout, and make different uh, carvings from the same cutout. And as a matter of fact, I created a book on that, and uh, if anybody's interested to see my books on that, and it created so many things like a Viking or a nativity and all kinds of things just on that simple cutout. And that's what the thing that I wanted to talk about, about uh, creativity. You know, a lot of people say they don't have a creative bone in their body. Yes, everybody's creative. It's just that uh, most people do not have the ability to, f to or, or they have too much, fail, uh, too much uh, fear and failure. And that's what I've done. I failed in a lot of this. I mean, I've carved a lot of things that look terrible and threw them away and started all over again. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, two of my favorites are uh, uh, Sean Sippa. If everybody's familiar with the Sean, Sean Sippa's uh, wood carvings, it's very simple that you can just change all kinds of things and make all kinds of things with just the same pattern. Uh, and there are all kinds of other uh, uh, books that uh, that you can see the patterns you can just change just by changing a little thing 
It was very interesting. Then I got a little more serious and I got into uh, using uh, figures, these little bendable figures, and, and then I put them in a pose and take pictures and make a pattern from that. I've got into clay, this particular clay. Um, I took a Marv Kaiserstadt test, uh, a class. This one here, I wanted to do a Civil War baseball player. And from that, we used a larmature and some, uh, I, I don't know what kind of clay this is, sort of like a, a oily clay or something that just does not harden. And then what we would do is uh, take the paper behind and take a pencil to make the cutout, or make the pattern for the cutout, the two sides. And then this is the final product. Oops. Face it. Is it really? Yeah. If he drops the bat? <laughs> Better when he gets hit. So it was really fun uh, using clay and using all kinds of uh, figures, bendable figures, for you to come up with some kind of an idea of uh, carving something new. Then I had this other idea, another. Um, Thought if you're familiar with, uh, or actually when you see a lot of other people's cutouts and a lot of people's rough outs, this is a uh, Floyd Rannigan rough out that I carved, so it's not my net his. And I thought, how can I create something different? And what I did was to, to make the next step was I just simply took a piece of wood like this. And then I penciled in where the hat is and where the hat, hair is. and where the shield is, where the shoe is, and then just make another, make my own version of this. And then from that, I would change something a little more. This is, uh, I think this probably right here is the third step from that. I thought, well, he had a sword coming out straight out. I thought, well, let's put the sword behind. Now, the reason why he doesn't have a head is because I was just more interested in the concept of the figure. I thought the head was just kind of not really necessary to go to the next level. And this is the, actually my final Viking. And it's kind of interesting how it actually, I actually started with something like this and I just took one step and the next step until finally I got to this, to this pattern here. Same thing with his Native American, did the same thing, just take a block of wood and, kind of pencil where the, the head is, just kind of pencil where the arms go. And then I created my own. Instead of having the hair in the back, but the hair in the front, just add one little thing at a time. And then before you know it, you got your own uh, interesting patterns. Uh, getting back to Mark Kaiserstadt, uh, I've taken uh, other classes where we would just simply take these little blocks of wood and we would just make little, little heads. Simple enough. Well, I thought while I was sitting there, why don't I take this next one I made, cut, kind of cut the head off a little bit, put a little rim on there, and make a little cowboy. This is not, not his pattern. Well, I mean, his, the face is a pattern, but I just simply tried the next step. If you do something a little different from what you've learned before, what, you, what pattern you used before. Um, one of the latest things that I've done was I've gotten into all kinds of uh, um, faces. Uh, the first thing that I've done was uh, to take a pumpkin like this, made a pumpkin and just made a simple grid. And then with that simple grid, I thought, well, why can't I just put that in different, use it in different characters? And then I just made, well, let's make, make an apple like that. And I kept practicing each time. The nose would be a little different. The smile would be a little different. If I have an apple, I'll just kind of put a stick in it, paint it brown. It's caramel apple. We need car caramel apple. And uh, then uh, Christmas time, I had uh, maybe a Christmas tree that would be grinning. in. And uh, this particular piece here, uh, I just had this inspiration where I had a uh, like this, there we go. Just a scrap of wood like this. Cut it in the center. And I just simply put it together like that and I thought, oh, wait a minute, let's just make two faces like that. And uh, now I also have an Easter bunny on one side and a carrot on the other, grinning carrot on the other side. Uh, I just uh, finish and need to paint uh, Uncle Sam on one side and a bottle rocket on the other side. So it's just kind of interesting how 
all this started with just simply one day I wanted to make this funny face, and before I knew it, there was just I had I just put I was doing other things with it. Have uh, a laughing uh, mouth wide open, laughing. I think these are two about the same. Just simply open the mouth a little more and make them laugh. Uh, earlier, I, I got into um, doing female figures. I'll try not to, uh, I forgot to mention, I probably end up being bouncing back and forth a little bit here. But earlier, I have got more into doing uh, female figures. Uh, this particular one here, this was made in oh, 2004, holy smokes. And uh, I like the face, the face turned out pretty good. Uh, but she kind of got a little wider in the hip or something like that, I don't know, and then a little uh, wider around the feet or something like that. I think it's still okay. But then the, the point I was trying to make here is just last year I thought I'll take the same figure and make it more realistic and see how much I've changed or how much I've, I've gotten better. And I think it's gotten a little better. Do some practice uh, heads. In fact, I do have a video on uh, carving female faces, so I'll do a lot of, a lot of practice faces on a block of wood like this. And this one I brought out, I was pretty inspired by this. This is actually uh, an idea that I got from the uh, Swedish Institute. Now, the Swedish Institute has a, a lot of wood carvings. And this particular character, I don't know if you couldn't see it, you can't see it from, from over there, but if he's, when you're done, you can see. It's uh, two flat plane carving, you know, Lena and Ollie or whatever. And they, they've gone to the um, art museum, and there's this uh, nude standing there, and he's kind of pretty happy to see that, and she's kind of like dragging him along. And, well, I like that, uh, the nude figure, so I thought I'd give that a try. So it's kind of interesting finding different uh, ideas from different places. One, uh, one thing that uh, I like to do, me and uh, uh, some of the people here, and some of the other carvers from other groups is go to the state fair during the state fair, ground, state fair days. And we would carve, we would demonstrate in the creative art buildings. And what we did was we would take and make little owls. I mean, everybody has seen these little, little simple little five minute owls. And we would just carve them out to the kids. And then one time a boy came up to me and says, can you carve a cat? You know, and, you know, and then I kind of looked at it and I thought, well, you know, if you could just kind of, kind of just, uh, where is he here? This is my first, one of the first cats. I just kind of, kind of carve in a little bit there and just do a little extra and it just would look like a cat. And because he asked me, I took the challenge to do that. And it took me a couple, few times before I get it to the point so it looks like a five minute cat. And after the five minute cat, let's make a five minute uh, fox. Same thing, it's almost the same pattern, just a little difference. That five minute raccoon. This one here just kind of squeezed it a little bit. So I think it's really interesting. You start with one thing and you just kind of change it and add it and do all kinds of things with it. Another uh, idea that I got was through Christmas wrapping papers. And, and some of the cartoon figures that would be on there. And I was trying to learn how to do from two-dimensional into three-dimensional. And this came from a wrapping paper. And so I learned how to do, it took me a couple times to figure it out. You know, when something is two-dimensional and it comes all the way to the end, that's where the side is and not where the front comes to an end. So I had to figure out all of how to round out the, the figure and the, uh, the hat. So I thought that's a good, interesting idea is just look at your uh, wrapping paper and come up with uh, patterns and ideas. Um, I also got into uh, bar carving. Um, I just uh, brought so only a few pieces. This is, uh, uh, I've done some wood spirits. I've got many, many different uh, sizes, but I thought I'd bring just the ornaments because I only had so much room. I think I brought too much. And so I got into wood spirits, 
and other things. And I thought, well, we'll just uh, make it a little smaller and put a uh, little uh, eye screw on the top and make it into an ornament. I use uh, a uh, light brown shoe cream on this. I've done many uh, gnome houses and I've used many uh, different color shoe creams on the bark. And this is my, my latest thing is uh, making it into an evergreen tree. This particular one was kind of squarish and so uh, because it uh, got a little thick on top I thought well I'll paint it white like it just after a snowstorm. That's cottonwood bark? That is cottonwood bark. The cottonwood bark we have in Minnesota is eastern cottonwood bark and Plains cottonwood bark is just on the, we just barely get it in Minnesota and then it's all into the Dakotas and Montana and all that. The Plains cottonwood bark is a little more stiffer, in fact some of the stuff I found you could probably use it as a baseball bat, it is so firm. Uh, where the bark around here, uh, this one is probably from around here, it's more lighter and uh, easier, it can easier fall, fall apart while you're carving, so you got to be careful about carving that. Uh, one of the things here, I want to I'll mention this before I move this over. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, carving magazine from the, the Willox, I finally made it on the cover. Uh, my uh, Abraham Lincoln made it on the cover of the uh, uh, carving magazine. This uh, fact is, if you're uh, if you subscribe to it, it'll be coming to your door shortly. So I thought that was a real thrill. Yep. <clears throat> uh, talking about uh, taking a pattern and making it different. This is this is uh, one of my favorite carvings. Except uh, the turkey just fell off of him, off of the Thanksgiving character, pulling a turkey. Have to glue that. And this is my holiday advent carving in which it just, as I say, the holidays seem to rush on by and I like to pull this out just before Halloween and it's just surprising how it just seems like a couple days later I'll be putting it away after New Year's. Well anyways, um, I forgot what his name was. Uh, I think we got this book here. Well, he has, uh, he has many Santas, and he had this particular pattern where Santa is running. And I thought, well, if I can create all the characters in the same pose, except she has to have her bag out there. And I thought that's kind of interesting, is just taking another pattern and just simply using the same but create something different as my way of trying to create something newer, something new. That's one of my favorite carvings there. Which part of that did you do first? I did the Santa first. You always do the easy, easy part first, and then you can adjust from there. Yeah, that's that was a really fun, fun carving. Um, I've gotten into uh, flat plane throughout the years. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I got Lynn as we first got started. A um, this is from the, our. Uh, library here, but this book was in a, uh, a kit which had a, the, <clears throat> the Oscar cut out and a knife and all kinds of other things. And, uh, and that's how I got uh, into some of the uh, flat plane carving. And uh, I decided to do, uh, just kind of move on to, from Harley Ruffsaw's patterns or any other patterns and just kind of do my own. and. Created a couple more different characters. There's Nicholas and Astrid. <clears throat> and there's Arv and Ola. And uh, recently, Lynn and I have uh, written a book on wood carvings that come to life, and these are our characters that come to life. In fact, I'm in the process of writing one where these two are traveling companions with a particular character and they get into all, well not, they get into some kind of trouble. But it is kind of fun creating uh, 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 Scandinavian style uh, wood carvings, flat plane wood carvings. Another thing that uh, everybody's familiar with is the dollar. I ran out of dollars. I didn't have a good example so I brought my cutout here. Everybody knows what a, basically what a dollar looks like. 
from whatever that town is, Dala Ishkabibble, I don't know what's the name Delarna. of the town. Delarna. Delarna. <coughs> Which is probably very insulting to a lot of people here at Inkits. And anyways, <laughs> since uh, we're kind of more in the Nor Norwegian, I mean, Lynn is Norwegian, so I'm kind of into more Norwegian persuasion, I thought, well, if this is Swedish, how can we create something different but still be the same? And I saw this pattern. Uh, this is a pattern of a of a wood carving that was found during the Viking era that was found, uh, I think, about uh, what, uh, 75 years ago. And it was, it was put on such a way, it was printed in such a way that I could make a pattern out of it. And I thought, well, okay, that's a Norwegian doll. <laughs> just doing, just trying to change something a little different. I keep moving this thing around. It's like a ball and chain here. Uh, some of the things that I do is what I like to do is scribble on a piece of paper, or on a drawing paper. Uh, and uh, that's where I get a lot of my patterns from. And let me see if I can show you some examples here of, I should have had it open, yeah, in fact, there's, that's why I started with Ola right there. <coughs> and the hands in the back. And what I do is I kind of do this kind of a scan, or uh, this kind of a uh, uh, drawing, and then I scan it into the computer. I got uh, uh, Photoshop, and I adjust it a little bit until finally I get a pattern that I really like. And uh, so I really, uh, that's how I do a lot of my uh, carvings. Here's one, as a matter of fact. This is the one with this, work, this carving over here, getting into the more uh, recent carvings here. This is the one that I taught at Metro Wood Carving Week. And last year I will be teaching this at the Car Fest this year. So I thought that was a little interesting. You know, all the Santas that I make, let's put a little, some birds on there and have them carry in. Instead of a regular stick, how about a, uh, a bird feeder stick? So we're shifting over to the more recent things. Uh, one, of the, one of the clubs I belong to is the, um, I can never get it right, Cannon, Fall, Cannon River Club in Fairbolt, which is the uh, Willock Studio. And every month we would uh, do a little carving, a little carving project, and usually I volunteer in the uh, October, November, December uh, er area. And uh, like I took this, made this uh, witch, simple witch, just, just started with a simple witch. And then I, for the next month, I practically use the same pattern, altered a little bit, and that would be Mrs. Uh, Pilgrim, and made a Mr. Pilgrim, and then from Mr. Pilgrim, I made a Mr. Santa Claus. So it's like the same pattern, only different. So that's, that's kind of fun. I brought this, I, didn't, I originally started with a, uh, this is this number two, the first thing was actually a this would be a tombstone where a ghost was sticking, like he was coming out. And I still had to cut out, and well, let's make a Santa Claus out of it. Uh, one of the things I do have to mention that uh, Lynn does a lot of creativity. She just likes to take a stick of wood and just uh, put a pencil to it and put a uh, uh, knife to it. And all of a sudden, she's got something completely, totally different. I brought a, just a couple of her samples here. There's a uh, farmer Santa. And I had to bring that. <clears throat> and recently, nice. with uh, Easter, there's the just out of a piece of. In fact, this is a, a piece of scrap wood, wasn't it? I think it was ready to go into the fire, and she just likes to pick it up, pencil in something, and carve away on it. And. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then I carved uh, Lynn's mom, mother. We always go out uh, in April to our farm. Uh, she, she just recently passed, but uh, we used to go out to our farm and do a yard cleanup, and so there she is with her list and, and the rake. And, and the list, what does the list say? It says rake, rest, burn, rest, eat. And that's about how it, how it goes. That's the way it should go. That's the way it should go. 
Um, and then um, one of Lynn's sisters liked to collect uh, my Santas. In fact, I'm glad that uh, she, matter of fact, I, I borrowed some of my, the older Santas that I uh, gave her for Christmas. And one year I thought I'd try something completely different. She's an artist and an art teacher. So I actually got, that's her right there. And I actually got this, uh, the pattern from a, what do you call those little um, drawings that you put in? Uh, clip art. Clip art. And it's just this cartoon of this person just doing this pose here. And I actually just kind of used that. And then I just uh, penciled in her features over it. And that's how I created this. Neat. Using the same thing, only different. And, uh, excuse me, last but not least, this is uh, my absolute uh, latest. This is uh, my steampunk Santa in his time machine. People who are familiar with the steampunk uh, fad, it's, uh, if you're familiar with the Wild Wild West, it's like uh, in the 1800 Victorian, uh, but it's futuristic. And so they've got gears and uh, steam, Items like they could do, like and travel through space or tra or fly or something like that. Even though was, they didn't, but it was this. It's kind of fun. And then I did just a quick. Is that all, is that all one piece? No, that is not all one piece. <laughs> Same with this one here, the steampunk uh, Easter Bunny. Like I did, I just took a flat piece of wood. It's just for the concept, and it's just a concept piece. That of course is not one piece. It's just like one gear and one one uh, pointer going up. But this one here, it was kind of a pain in the, the neck. This time I did a little different. The first one I did was, the, of course the bust is easy to do. <laughs> the first one I did is got some pictures of gears and made them the, the, the print out bigger, smaller, whatever. And as soon as it was done and I tried to put it together, I found that the, uh, the gears didn't mesh. And, you know, one is like this and, you know, and, oh, no, I, that wasn't thinking I had. So, uh, so I did kind of manage to kind of squash it together. But this one here, I did use gears that did mesh. In fact, as I was gluing it, I could, uh, I could move this thing and all the gears would be moving. So I had at least one more gear for it, but I thought it got a little too, too busy. And I also had another... Uh, Put another pointer, but I didn't know where to put it because if this goes around, that can go around. But if I put a pointer here, it would kind of, they would kind of, unless it would go around. It, well, this one goes around. I don't know. So uh, basically, that's uh, <clears throat> that's what I want to talk about is creativity. Not only just tell you what I've done and and bring all my carvings on and so on and so forth. That it is easy to to, to go from one step to the next. Using somebody else's pattern, if you if you if you don't want to create something of your own, or or draw something of your own, that's one way you can uh, get going on uh, creativity. Is just take one thing and just make it a little different from the next, and and the next, and the next, and until finally it it's it's yours. Where the original to the like this one here to this one, it's hard to tell that they actually started the same or this one was uh, 2011 and this was 1999 but that's how it all that's how it all started with one and it just made things different but uh, does anybody have any questions no questions I'm either that boring or uh, <laughs> I was so crystal clear that what what's next yeah. <laughs> I carve. <laughs> I count my fingers to make sure they're all there. Um, uh, that Mark Kaiser said, that the baseball player, is that his? No, that's mine. As a matter of fact, uh, this is uh, Marv Kaiser's staff. He it looks like Mark's work, though. Oh, well, yeah, it's his influence, that's of course. A compliment. Yeah, that is a compliment. It is. You bet it is. He, uh, he teaches twice, uh, twice a year, one in May and one in June. And the May class is, you come up with your idea, and he's got the clay, and he's got the, the wire, and the board, and everything, and you just come up with other, whatever idea that you want. And that's, that's why I've always wanted to do this as a Civil War uh, baseball player. 
uh, this particular character, I wanted to have him as a Union batter and then have a Confederate catcher. And I was interested in that kind of a, a concept of the fraternization during the, the Civil War where they would stop shooting at each other, play a little baseball, and when they're done, get back behind the bushes and keep popping at each other. And uh, so what we did is just simply, uh, like I said, uh, penciled in and made the cutout, and, and there he is. If you're interested, like I said, uh, contact the, uh, the uh, Willock Studio in Fairball. The second class he does is just a, a figure. And uh, you'll already, you already have it all uh, cut out, and you would just do a bunch of heads and all kinds of things. And he just, when you take his class, he, he downloads everything he knows, and he'll give you everything he knows. And one of the fun things about his, his, uh, his classes, uh, one day after lunch, you go to his studio, and it's just incredible. He's got everything everywhere. He doesn't sell anything, and he's got so many interesting carvings everywhere. It's just like a museum. It's just an incredible shop. Incredible shop. But is that downtown Fairball? Downtown Fairball, yeah. Most of my carvings I uh, paint with acrylics and, and I use uh, um, Waco wax. 75% uh, uh, neutral and 25% and dark. It gives a kind of an antique-ish look. I kind of want to look like like it was brand new in your, your grandma's era, and then you just kind of went up in her attic and you saw this. That's that kind of a look, just sort of like a 100-year-old or 75-year-old look. Anybody else got any questions? What's next that you're working on? Oh, good question. I, know, I almost forgot. Um, one thing that I like to do with... I don't know if I got it. Do I have this one here? This this particular character right here is uh, yeah, there he is. I was trying to create a new carving for the next Metro wood carving show, and this is I'm seeing how this works. This is Santa Claus who's got one of those old time telephones. You know the you have the receiver in one and the and the speaker in the other. The old uh, turn of the century phones there, and sometimes I like to take this and just take a, uh, a quick piece of wood and kind of do a little concept there. And that's what I'm doing next, is trying to figure, figure out how this works. I think this is going to be one of those where the hand and the phone is one piece, and you carve that and then you have to sho shove it in the uh, sleeve. Thanks for reminding me, I almost forgot. Well, what is next is I wanted to learn how to do chip carving, that's one thing. Because uh, I've never done it before, so that's why I learned it. Is there, uh, is there any kind of a machine that, if you want to make a, a copy of one of these here, that you can photograph it some way and, and, get, a, and get a pattern, uh, you know, and then you turn it around 90 degrees and... Yeah, I could do that. In fact, uh, most uh, scanners, you can do that. You can, you, what, what kind of equipment do you have to have for that? Well, a computer, a computer and a scanner. You can, you can uh, do uh, uh, two-dimensional. Another thing I got, to, you were talking about uh, a duplicator? Well, I've got one of those duplicators, too, is no, the one that's like a... In it's like, some way I could, get, I could get a pattern of, like if I want to take that girl in front there, I want, to, I want to get a front view of her, and I want to turn her 90 degrees and get the side view, so then I could get a, a pattern that I could cut out and bamsle out it all. Well, I suppose any uh, camera you can take a picture of and uh, print it out from a computer, that's uh, basically all I know as far as doing something like that. I have, uh, like if I want to do a, a human figure yeah. and have them pose, yeah. as you know, if you were to take a picture of this person, you know, everything is three-dimensional, if you were, yeah. you were to do this line and how... Uh, every, I found out the hard way if he's got this leg, one leg back and one leg forward, well, the, the leg in the back looks like it's lifting up. And I fell for that once. So what is this guy doing with the leg up? So what I like to do if I was really into it, into it is you, you'd pose, and I take my camera and I take one picture down at your feet, one in the middle, and one right at your, right at your eye, eye or maybe about the forehead. And then I would take Photoshop and actually kind of mesh them together just to get a pattern. And then of course I'd have one picture 
uh, as my go by. So you get a, if you want to get a side view of it. Same with same thing. You gotta you gotta stay put so I can come around on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've done with a lot, especially uh, going out in the uh, Civil War. In fact, I've even had a guy kind of pull something like that. And other things, other I got other Civil War carvings where you know he's got a sword, he's ready to pull a sword out or a gun like this. Or yeah, so it, it is kind of difficult, but I don't know if that answered your question. It just as far as figure, <coughs> I've even done it where I have put it down. If I really, really, really want to get a pattern, is put it down like this and do one at the bottom, one at the top, and then uh, the two pictures and kind of smish them together a little bit so it looks right. So. You can also take a camera, but use your zone lens as far as back yeah, as possible. Yeah, I've done that too. Then just take a picture of the deal. And a zoom lens, because then you won't have as much of a three-dimensional distortion. Yeah, I've done that a couple times too. There. Any other questions? You know, I think well Russ would make a really good vice president. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody got any other questions? <laughs> Did I just get suckered? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, anybody got any real yeah, questions? Yeah. <laughs>